Hi everyone, and welcome to Lazy Lion. December's finally here, and with that, we thought we'd spread some holiday cheer by talking about one of the most iconic, yet oftentimes overlooked Christmas movies there is. We're talking about Tokyo Godfathers, a hilarious and heartwarming tale by the late genius director Satoshi Kon. Just the fact that this is a Satoshi Kon creation should be enough to entice you to watch this film. But just in case some of you need an extra push, we're going to tell you just why you shouldn't miss out on this masterpiece. Now, quick side note. We were first introduced to Satoshi Kon's work when we saw his film Millennium Actress. And with certainty, we can say that that was the moment we first became consciously aware of just how limitless the art of animation as a medium could be. Even films like Inception, which many people have drawn parallels to Satoshi's film Paprika, are still visually and creatively tame in comparison. Not to say Inception's not a good movie, because it's pretty great, but it being a live action film, it had limits. Possibly because, and this is just our theory, with live action movies, our minds are still trying to work off of realistic possibilities. Whereas with animation, your mind has already to a certain degree accepted the fact that this is not reality and therefore has an easier time accepting abstract and more complex ideas and concepts. We feel that animation allows storytellers to push boundaries and explore avenues not readily available through other mediums. Another reason we're so drawn to anime. So, after Millennium Actress, our starved little minds gobbled up anything bearing Satoshi Kon's stamp. Which brings us back to Tokyo Godfathers. Granted, this is Satoshi Kon's most traditional storytelling film. But, just like his other works, the lens tends to focus on a rarely addressed social issue. In this case, homelessness in Japan. But not to worry, he does so in a very non-depressing way largely in thanks to his compellingly dynamic cast of characters. Our homeless trio is comprised of Gin, a middle-aged alcoholic man, Miyuki, a teenage girl runaway, and Hana, a transgender woman and former drag performer. These three outsiders of society have banded together to form their own little family unit. Now, to set the tone of the film, the first scene opens up on Christmas Eve with a children's performance of the Three Kings from the Nativity play. Here we see two of our three main protagonists watching the play. Gin, who's obviously bored out of his mind and clearly only there for the free food. And Hannah, who honestly delights in this cute little angel's production, as if she were a proud mother sitting in the audience. Already we can see the dynamics of their relationship. Gin, the gruff, snarky cynic, and Hannah, the kind-hearted, yet sometimes ridiculous and overly dramatic dreamer. These two characters are rounded off nicely with the addition of Miyuki, the sarcastically sassy and sometimes insolent youngster of the group. The story reaches its first impasse when our trio are rummaging through a dump heap looking for Christmas presents, only to come across an abandoned baby instead. Hannah, the mother of the group, instinctively wants to keep the child, calling the infant a Christmas miracle and seeing this as her opportunity to finally be a real mother, while the other two not-so-keen members strongly oppose that idea and suggest taking the baby to the police. Hannah, having gone through the foster care system and finding little love there, refuses to let the baby spend her first Christmas in such a miserable way. And so, the group comes to a compromise. Instead, they'll look for the baby's real parents and reunite them. Very a la three wise men. And so, with only a note and some photographs left behind in the baby bag, their dubious quest through the vast city of Tokyo begins, leading them to all manner of trials and tribulations. The film Tokyo Godfathers, which was loosely based on the novel Three Godfathers by Peter B. Kine, was released in 2003, and like all of Satoshi Kon's other films, was produced by Studio Madhouse. Satoshi Kon not only directed the film, 
but also penned the screenplay along with the master screenwriter Keiko Nobumoto, who we've previously praised for her work on Cowboy Bebop. With her on the team, you know you're going to get some lively and witty dialogue, which having watched the film and seen the interactions between our three main protagonists, we can conclude with profound glee was magnifique. Seriously guys, trust us, this movie is a lot of fun. Which some people might be surprised to hear, given its overall plotline and the fact that our main characters are all destitute. So, how do you take serious subject matter and present it in a way that doesn't lead to a very blue Christmas movie? Why, with some comic relief, of course. And that's part of the genius of Satoshi Khan. Make it a tragic comedy! The perfect way to combine both tragic and comedic elements, weaving together a story that deals with some pretty melancholic realities, but does so all through the eyes of some amusingly gregarious and very human characters that you just can't help rooting for, making the story come across as palatable and heartwarming to the audience, instead of as preachy. Which is clever, because who doesn't love an underdog story? Even then, it's not surprising to hear that many were doubtful about the success and reception of the film. Most people gravitate to stories about nonconformists that boldly live their lives on the outskirts of society. But that enthrallment doesn't necessarily transfer over to those living on the outskirts of society who live under somewhat dismal conditions. During an interview with Satoshi Khan, the interviewer and Khan reflect that had this been a live-action film, any studio would have been hard-pressed to gamble on choosing a middle-aged alcoholic homeless man as one of their lead characters, further stating that the film being an animated movie was probably the only way this type of story, with this unique set of characters, would have ever seen the light of day. So thank goodness for animation then, because Tokyo Godfathers is a not to be missed tour de force. Have we mentioned how much we love this movie? <laughs> now, another thing that becomes obviously apparent while watching the film is that Satoshi Khan is a big fan of serendipity-like coincidences. We know from his interviews that he also felt this way in real life having chosen the voice actress for Miyuki after constantly coming across the actress, either from having seen her in movies to then seeing her image plastered all over magazines while at the bookstore. When the universe spoke, Satoshi got the hint. And it's entertaining to watch how the characters react to all these seemingly random coincidences throughout the film. Hannah, of course, believes them all to be the work of the Christmas Miracle Baby, who she's temporarily named Kyoko meaning pure child, and whom she strongly believes is the bringer of good luck. Now, one could argue that the baby is just as unlucky as she is lucky, since she was kidnapped by a deranged and grief-stricken woman from the hospital and then abandoned in a dumpster. But do you really want to argue with Hannah? No thanks, we'll pass. Thanks to all these coincidences that leave the group haphazardly all over Tokyo, we soon become privy to the circumstances that led each of our protagonists to a life on the streets. In one way or another, each is running away from their pasts, hoping that with enough distance they can ignore their responsibilities and avoid having to deal with the consequences of their actions. For Hannah, she's run away due to shame. For Gin, it's guilt. And for Miyuki, it's fear. The thing about your past, though, is that usually, no matter how far you run, it always has that uncanny ability to eventually catch up with you. And due to this quest, they frequently, and quite unexpectedly, come directly face to face with it, no longer being able to ignore it. Being forced to face it, they were also presented with a glimmer of hope for what the future might hold for each of them, making what started off as being a simple endeavor of returning a child to her family into a tale of redemption and growth. This is a Christmas movie after all, and a perfect one in our opinion to ease anyone who feels a bit unsure about liking anime into the fold. Especially those who are a bit more mature. This year, we'll finally get you to watch anime, mother! Mother! <laughs> so on that note, 
the Lazy Lion team would like to wish everyone a happy holiday, from us to you. Stay safe out there, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button to let us know. And you can also hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, stay obsessed.